of life whereby this topic what you're supposed to look at is dna structure describe the structure of dna that's a question describe the structure of dna in this case what are you supposed to look at i'm going to tell you number two you know that dna replication yes uh-huh transcription translation yes these ones uh you know them is easy to get them but now the most important part here is the structure of dna because sometimes people neglect that you know how to describe dna uh, replication structure of dna how do you describe just in case it has come first of all you know that dna is made up of a uh, simple structure called nucleotides if they ask you what is the monomer of dna you have to know that monomer of dna is a nucleotide and these nucleotides yes they have different different um parts whereby this is a phosphate this is um a sugar and this is a nitrogenous base this is a phosphate this is a sugar is a nitrogenous base remember this side you also have the same kind of structure yes if you have the same structure this side this side it means that if they ask you to describe you have to tell us that dna is made up of a nucleotide yes these nucleotides are made up of phosphate nucleotide is a mark nucleotide is made up of phosphate sugar that is deoxyribose sugar and nitrogenous bases is also another mark then you mention the nitrogenous bases what are those nitrogenous bases the interest is adenine is thymine is guanine and then is cytosine you mentioning this is another mark then you tell us that it is made up of two strands yes these strands you telling us strands is another mark these strands are joined together by weak hydrogen bonds these weak hydrogen bonds are uh, is also another mark weak hydrogen bonds and then it twists around to form a double helix double helix is also another mark there is only one mark i've not uh, spoken about of you mentioning the bases but also saying that whereby adenine goes with the thymine guanine goes with the cytosine is also another mark you mentioning that adenine thymine guanine cytosine is a tick adenine with thymine guanine with cytosine is also another tick so that is dna so all these if you count uh, the, the the marks which are there the eight marks but we only need a few of them and those few of them what is it we only need six of them so don't go to the paper without knowing to describe the structure of dna because it belongs to six marks dna replication here you have to describe the structure of dna sorry uh, dna replication whereby you tell us that dna double helix is uh unwinds weak hydrogen bond break yes unzip and the breaking of weak hydrogen bond is one mark we don't we don't give you two marks there is one mark then to form two separate let me repeat it the word separate must be must be there to form two separate strands each strand is acting as a template It's Zoleka, I think you are hearing me, ne? Yeah, I'm just looking at the people who are live so that um if you have any challenge, let me know in the comment uh, section. I will answer it immediately. All right. Say, saying two separate strand is another mark. Two the two strand they will act as a template. They will act as template. And then using free floating dna nucleotide we use dna nucleotide to form a complementary strand whereby 
adenine goes with thymine, guanine goes with cytosine. Are you seeing? Then you form this DNA with one original strand and one new strand, which are genetically identical. That's how you can describe DNA replication. But we have some few questions I'm going to show you these other questions because this is a six mark question. Just in case, remember your paper, it has almost 45 marks full of this short question. In each section, we bring at least one of which this at least one will come. All right. Then transcription. Transcription must also know it that DNA double helix unwind, weak hydrogen bond, break to form two separate strands. Now, one strand acts as a template. You have to know that. One strand acts as a template to form the messenger RNA using free floating messenger RNA nucleotide. In this case, we are using free floating messenger. For the case of DNA replication here, for the case of DNA replication here, here we are talking about we are talking about that uh, we are talking about transcription. But when you're talking about DNA replication, two strands act as a template while in transcription, one strand is acting as a template. Then, whereby adenine goes with uracil, thyme, um, adenine goes with uracil, and then guanine goes with cytosine. Yes? Then this messenger RNA moves out of the nucleus via the nuclear pore to the ribosome. So, thus, once you write it like that, obviously, in these questions, we always have questions or uh, marks with your excess. So we are looking for only five to six. Transcription is done. What about translation? In translation, according to, depending on what you have memorized, but I'm going to show you the marking point in each. If you skip, you have lost a mark. According to messenger RNA codons, codon is a mark. The transfer RNA with the complementary anticodon, anticodon is a mark. Complementary anticodon is also another mark. Brings the required amino acid. It brings the required amino acid to the ribosome. The required amino acid is also another mark to the ribosome. Ribosome is another mark to form... Uh, sorry, the amino acids are joined together. The amino acids né, are joined together by peptide bond to form a required protein. That's it. Nothing else. According to the messenger RNA codons, the transfer RNA with the complementary anticodons bring the required amino acid to the ribosome. The amino acids are joined together by peptide bond to form a required protein. DNA code of life is done in terms of the six marks. So it means that you have at least one question which is most likely to come. Now, listen, I'm going to show you now these other questions which might come, né? or which you're going to find uh, in your paper. Listen. Before I go there, students make a mistake and they call peptide bond, they call them poly, poly peptide. This is dumb. This is wrong. Polypeptide bond. We don't have this. We call it peptide bonds. We don't have polypeptide bond. Please don't call them polypeptide bond. We call them peptide bond. And then I'm going to show you also another mistake where students make. They call a polypeptide chain poly, polypeptide chain a protein. It is only a polypeptide chain if it is less than 50 amino acids 50 and above amino acids we call them we call them protein it's only a protein when it's 50 amino acid and above i hope um uh, you are getting it uh, right
Okay. Uh, what we are saying here. Recording in progress. Sorry about that. Ne? All right. Huh. We are saying that. Uh, we are saying that. Look at um, the questions where we other questions. DNA replication. Why does it occur to increase the chromosome number? Why does it occur to increase the chromosome number? Where does it occur? It occurs in the nucleus. When does it occur? It occurs during interphase. I think. How does it occur? Is the process which you have described. So DNA replication is done. Who discovered the structure of DNA? James Watson and Francis Crick. James Watson, Francis Crick. Uh -huh. Another question. What is the difference between DNA nucleotide and RNA nucleotide? What is the difference between DNA nucleotide and RNA nucleotide? They are not asking what is the difference between DNA and RNA. They are looking for only the nucleotide of DNA and the nucleotide of RNA. So in this case, you talk about DNA has deoxyribose sugar, RNA has ribose sugar. DNA, um, DNA has um, DNA nucleotide has uh, thymine, RNA has uracil. We don't have any other. That's it. Ne? Someone is asking me that I should repeat the structure uh, 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 of DNA. Uh, describe the structure of DNA. Uh, yes, I'm going to go to even genetics. I'm going to go even to, to, to evolution. I'm going to show you the whole paper, what you expect. And within these two hours, you'll be able to write the paper. Ne? You write the paper within one hour. So the discussion you're going to do within these two hours, you'll be able to write this paper within one hour. Meaning that nothing we're going to miss. Okay. Um, so now as I wind, I'm, I'm winding up, what is the difference between uh, the, the, the difference between DNA and RNA? Those ones you know. But there is one, 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 one question they might they can ask you, what is the difference between transcription and translate, um, um, transcription and DNA replication? Transcription, here you form one strand will act as a template, while DNA replication, the two strands will act as a template. I think. Uh -huh. In transcription, yes, yes, we use uracil, adenine, thymine, guanine. Uracil. While in translation, we use adenine. Eh? In tr transcription, we use adenine, guanine, cytosine, uracil. For the new uh, strand which is formed. Meaning that we form a messenger RNA. While on DNA replication, we form DNA. Then, in transcription, yes, you'll find out that in transcription, and uh, DNA replication, we have also some few similarities, whereby DNA double helix unwind, also in transcription, DNA double helix unwind. Weak hydrogen bond break, also decide weak hydrogen bond break. If just in case they are looking for the similarities there, you are able to answer that. Now, as I'm winding up this DNA, there is a question which is always a challenge to students. What is that question? That question is about the genes. The gene. Gene mutation. Gene, muta gene mutation. Now, let me give you an example. If you have A, G, C, and this is coding to codes for leucine, and you have A, C, G here. And this code is for tryptophan. Yes. And then you have A, C, G. And this also code is for leucine. Then they ask you, how will the protein be affected if this is changed to this? 
because you form a different amino acid the protein functioning or the functioning of the protein will change so it means that you have to tell us that when agc is changed to ag scg leucine no tryptophan will be added to the protein instead of leucine or the polypeptide chain this leads to a different protein or the different functioning of a protein you mentioning this and mentioning this is a tick and also mentioning different protein is also another tick because this question is always three marks what about if this with this 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 g changes this and this changes to this even if it is one but it is the same amino acid this means that the functioning of the protein will not change however much the g the the the, the, the base sequence has changed but th what is formed codes for the same amino acid therefore it means that you will find out that it is exactly the same protein the functioning will not change it's like someone saying that for example let me just use an example here someone can call you sibusiso someone uh, uh you will say yes sir or can call you nturi still you say yes sir i think meaning that is the same kind of person but if that is if this because this is leucine and this is leucine what if someone calls you calls sibusiso and then um the next time uh the, 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 the next caller calls you dobe obviously sibusiso will not reply no sibusiso will not reply it's dobe who will say that yes sir because now it is different protein the function will change but it's the same protein the function will remain the same so i repeat i've concluded with dna we are only looking we will only look at it when you're talking about the questions so here you are saying that dna structure replication transcription translation please don't go without knowing it and this gene mutation of dna um when you talk about dna profiling that one is a little bit easy please just read the advantages disadvantages um uh, uh, uh. and sometimes the trick which is there is they tell you that other than that what is mentioned in the question give another and you find the student giving the same answer in the in that in that what in that question so it means that you lose a mark let's check and see here let's check and see here uh, i'm not going to go through objectives but i'll go through the terminologies because i love the terminologies here is the question of dna uh let me just reduce it a bit now fine fast 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 now this is just a simple simple question what is x in most cases people say that x is the, <laughs> is is uh, a cell membrane x is not a cell membrane x is a nuclear membrane because the cell membrane is out nuclear membrane uh this is a nucleus but they can ask you the process uh what is this this is translation once you see something like this ne? it is transferrin a this is a amino acid but if they put uh, dots there this is not a protein it's a polypeptide chain because i said that polypeptide chain is less than 50 amino acid above 50 amino acid it is a protein since this is just one two three four five only five amino acid therefore that is a polypeptide chain and then what is this uh this is um, um messenger RNA, and then which organelle is this is a ribosome now question can come how many bases how many nucleotides how many codes code for amino acid so let's answer that how many bases code for an amino acid amino acid remember an amino acid yes an amino acid yes it's always having three bases because of this one two three so if how many bases is one two three but they're saying that if there are three amino acids how many bases are there so it's going to be one two three times three which gives you nine if 
I have nine bases, how many codons are there? Remember, each one, two, three is one code, is one codon. So how many codons are in nine bases? So I will say that divide by three. Therefore, how many codons? Codons will be also three. I think you have to know when to divide and when to multiply. Yeah. Lastly, um, on this, uh, they can also give you a question that uh, they can ask you a question uh, that look. They can ask you a question that twenty percent is adenine. What is what is the percentage of guanine? So you have to know this. Ne? If twenty percent, you have to know that A goes with T, C goes with G. Ne? C goes with what? C goes with G. So if A is twenty, this one is also what? 20. So 20 plus 20 is equal to 40. Ne? So now, because these percentages out of 100, therefore I'm going to say 100 minus 40, so it gives me 60. I think if it is 60, what is really happening there? 60 is going to be for these two. So divide by 2, so it's going to be uh, 30, it's going to be 30. So it means that the percentage of guanine is going to be 30 percent don't go to the paper without knowing how to calculate the base ne? yeah <clears throat> i'm using these as examples so we are saying that um, which organelle is x we have seen organelle x is nucleus we have seen it um let me do like this is nucleus and then which molecule is z which molecule is z uh where is z where z is messenger rna don't just say RNA. It's messenger RNA. Step two locations in the uh, locations of DNA in the cell, other than the nucleus in the cell. Less so it means that you. you have to talk about you have to talk about uh, number one, uh, mitochondria, chondria and chloroplast. Yes, mitochondria and chloroplast. Describe process W. W is, is, we don't have any other process occurring in the nucleus except transcription. So you have to describe transcription. I've exhausted most of the questions you're going to find in DNA Code of Life. It's only one last question. Let me, yes, this is the question how to interpret this. And, uh, however, I've tried to explain something here. The trick behind here is one. How? The trick which is here, please check and see what is there. If they say this is DNA and they gave you DNA at the beginning, then you don't need to change. If they say they give you DNA and what is here is transfer, you have to change it to messenger RNA and you have to change it to transfer RNA. Are you seeing? So, in this case, they are saying that name the ba DNA based triplet code for serine. Now, this is transfer RNA. Serine is here. So, I'm going to say is UCG. This is uh, transfer RNA. Convert it to messenger, which is going to be, yes, AG. C. Then convert it to DNA because they want DNA. How many times do you convert? It depends on what they have given you. So it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be uh, a a yes. It's gonna be a yes. Uh, G and then C. So that's gonna be. Are they saying serine? Yes. That's what is gonna be the answer. First two amino acids is coded for Z. In the diagram so they are saying they want to identify now this is transfer rna but z what is z z is messenger therefore you have to just change this into transfer RNA, one conversion because it is messenger to transfer rna and then you come to the table you find it what is the change in sequence of nitrogenous bases i've talked about it here that these changes gene mutation 
sudden change in the sequence of DNA. So that's that's what you call a uh, uh, gene or the, the, the nitrogenous bases. When they change the sequence, then automatically uh, you're going to have um, a, a, a different uh, uh, protein structure if it codes for a different amino acid. So what is a change in the sequence of nitrogenous base in DNA code? Gene mutation or mutation. They're saying that uh, code CU, CUU, -U, uh aha, -huh, changes to C. Now, they're saying codons, codons. It means that is, they are not saying anticodons, codons. So it means that I have to convert this into transfer RNA. Are you hearing? All right. Uh -huh. We are saying that change this is going to be G A A. And then this is going to be G G A. So G A A is going to be what? So now you saying this is going to be leucine. Like the same example I gave. C C U is going to be G G A. G G A is going to be what? Proline. Proline leucine. Now you writing to us that this is going to code for leucine. This co is code for proline. Those are two marks. Leucine, a mark. Proline, a mark. I think. Now you tell us because of a different amino acid is coded for, it will result in a different protein. But if it was coding for the same amino acid, then the protein would have remained the same. So it would have said that this code is for the same amino acid, for example, leucine, and also this code is for the same amino acid, which is leucine. This will not change the functioning or the structure of the protein. But because now it is changing, this is leucine and then this is proline. You mentioning leucine, a mark, proline, a mark. This will result in a different protein or functioning of the protein. All right, let's go to meiosis. Yes, meiosis, unless uh, you have any question. Someone is asking me, where do I get, uh, where do you get your my booklet? Uh, th there is a link in the description below. Ne? Yes, that link uh it will take you to the website you go to grade you go to grade 7 to 12 then it's going to bring you another page which has uh past the paper 2022 it's going to bring you notes you click on notes then it's going to give you the different subjects uh for grade 12 and grade 11 and stuff you click grade 12 and then it's going to give you the subjects now now the subject when you click life science is gonna show you the different topics then you download the topic per topic yes that's how you can get that booklet let's look at meiosis 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 what do you expect to find in meiosis in your exam meiosis what do you expect to i'm now talking about the six mark question I showed you the six mark question for DNA. So now I'm showing you the six mark question for meiosis. You cannot miss. You will come back and then comment that, sir, thank you for giving us the scope. Yeah. If you follow what I'm telling you, you I guarantee you a distinction. Share the video to others so that the others can also. Um Someone is saying that it's not clear. The, the, the clear is is uh, as a result of your uh, is as a result of your, the internet and uh, your internet connection. You can uh, increase the maybe to from one twenty eight to maybe four hundred and eighty something like that. All right, let's continue. Meiosis number one. You need to know. Do you know how to describe the karyotype? Karyotype. Karyotype. I think you know the karyotype. If you don't know, I'll show you how to describe it. You need to know how to describe crossing over. You need to know how to describe non this junction. Ne? Now, this one 
is a star is a drawing face before face after face at the side so you have to know that how do you describe a karyotype let me see if i can find a question here which has a karyotype and then i'm gonna describe for you so that when i'm describing you see you see ne? you see what i'm trying to describe eh? sorry for yeah here is an example of a karyotype describe the karyotype of individual two ne? but it, when the question comes might not uh, the character might not be there you have to be uh, knowing it by head uh, for example the karyotype is individuals are made up of 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes yes from you mentioning you mentioning that 46 ne 46 is a mark ne 40 sorry you know technology what's happening okay let me check and see 46 or 23 pairs don't say 23 because if you just said 23 without writing the word pair is wrong it's made up of 23 pairs of chromosome from pair number one yes to pair number 22 is called orosome you see now you're describing a karyotype it's called what oro Zoom. Yes, the twenty-third pair is gonosome or sex chromosome. Yes, the twenty-third pair is made up of X and Y. If X and X they are together, the individual is a female. All those are marks. If X and Y come together, the individual is a male. You see, you are describing the karyotype. You have already exited the, 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 the six marks. This, the, 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 each chromosome pair, they have different sizes. So, that's how you can describe the karyotype. It's made up of 23 pairs. Pair number one to pair number 22 is called orosome. The 23rd pair is called a gonosome. Uh, uh, these pairs, yes, each pair of chromosome have different size. The twenty-third pair, if X is made up of X and Y, if X and X meet, is is the individual is a female. Is X and Y meet, the individual is a male. That's how you describe. Now, what about if they bring a karyotype like this? Yes, like this, and then ask you which one is a male, which one is a female. Check. This is short. This is two of them are long. Therefore, the, this one is a male, this one is a female. Give a reason for your answer. The chromosomes here, they are not of the same size. Are you see? Same size and shape. While here, they are same size and shape. So it means that this is X and X. Well, this is X and Y. Remember, we say is longer than Y. That's why you find that to happen like that. Now, Someone is asking me. All right, I think uh, it's sorted. Now we are saying that. Uh, let's go to another uh, question of karyotype here, just in case, because I was describing the six mark question, the six mark question. But there can bring some few questions here. What are somatic cells? Somatic cells. These are body cells. Ne? These are just body cells. Name the specific type of chromosome number one. To, ah, I said it is the orosome. Each pair shown in the homologous chromosome. Mm -hmm. Each pair. State the origin uh, of each pair of chromosome. Definitely one came from the nucleus of the ovum. Another one came from the nucleus of the, uh, the, the, the sperm. Meaning that came one came one chromosome. For example, this chromosome came from the mother. And this chromosome came from the father. So came from the nucleus of the ovum. This one came from the nucleus of the, the sperm. And then fertilization took place. And then a zygote was formed. That's what they are looking for. They are saying that. State three characteristics of chromosomes which are homologous. Homologous chromosomes. These are chromosomes with the same shape, size. 
same location of genes not same genes no 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 same location of genes if they are same genes then you would have looked alike but the chromosome where they are located the locus of these genes in these chromosomes are the same i think now i'm clear on that so please, you must not miss out any question. Explain one observable reason why two identical, uh, these two individuals are not identical twins. Why are these ones not identical twins using this karyotype? These are not identical twins. Why? Because this is a male and this is a female. Obviously, you know that if it is a male, what happens? What happens? If it is a male, the sperm is going to be why from the father ne? and if it is a female the sperm is gonna be if it is a female the sperm female the sperm is gonna be x you understand we only have one of them so i cannot use one sperm and then i form x and y never now why are they not identical because of the different sex observable the twin third pair this individual one has x and y well individual two has x and x so identical twins are as a result of one sperm fuses with the ovum and then the ovum splits into two non-identical twins are as a result of two sperms fusing with the two over so meaning that you have different um different individuals that's why is the the, the non-identical you can have a boy and a girl but the identical twins is either boys O is girls because we used one sperm if the one sperm of x fuses with the ovum then it's gonna be identical twins girls if one sperm of 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 of, of y fuses is gonna become identical twins male so that's exactly happening yes um i think yes i'm done with the karyotype what about crossing over crossing over describe the process of crossing over i think i organized for you a question which you're gonna see in crossing over oh i think i have it's not there it's here crossing over yalla is here when you talk about crossing over you talk about two homologous chromosomes these chromosomes they come together i think these chromosome they come together they cross over at point called chiasma they must be homologous the word homologous chromosomes align together that's a key point homologous chromosome they come together and they homolo the chromatids of the homologous chromosome cross over at a point called chiasma i think at a point called chiasma you understand and then uh, these chromosomes, these chromatids, they exchange the genetic material. When they exchange the genetic material, yes, they split and then they form genetically different chromosomes. That's why I told you these are genetically different chromosomes. But these homologous chromosomes, they are not the same. They, are, they, don't, they don't have the same chromosome number. They have the same location of the genes in their chromosomes. That is the meaning. All right. Now, what is um, what is uh, P? What is this P? We have talked about. We said that is uh, is is. Some people they call this central mare. That is not a central mare. A central mare is Q. Please don't confuse central mare and chiasma. C, chas, H, this pen, chas, chasma. If swan is called chasma, if the men we call them chasmara, chasmara. So this is a central mare, central mare, central mare. And then this is a chromatid. It's not a chromosome. It's a chromatid. What about this? These are homologous chromosomes. Sometimes they can ask you, how do we call the homologous chromosomes under crossing over? It's called a bivalent. It's called a what? A bivalent. Chromosomes under, homologous chromosomes under crossing 
over. We call it a biver land. Yes. I've not checked if um, uh, because the schedule changed. If just in case that electricity goes at four o'clock, ne? I will come back at six o'clock live. But if it doesn't go, we are still continuing until last, until a distinction is scored. Yes. All right, let's continue. Uh -huh. Now, we are done with the uh, crossing over. Let's talk about Nandis Junction. What is Nandis Junction? Are you there, guys? Nandis Junction. If you have any challenge, if I'm going to another point, please let me know. I'll read your comment there, and then I'll come back to you. All right. Eh, none this junction. What is none this junction? Before I got none this junction, where does crossover take place? It takes place during prophase one. Don't just say prophase. We'll get it wrong. Pro, pro, phase, sorry, pro, phase one. Pro, phase one. Eh, eh. What are some of the causes of what are some of the causes of mutations? No, no, no. What are some of causes of variation? We'll talk about them. Causes of variation. I'll see how do people lose marks here. You think that you have written the paper, can't the paper has written you? <laughs> I'll show you. There is no way the paper is going to write you tomorrow. You're going to have to write it. All right, let's continue. God willing. Uh, we are saying that non disjunction occurs during anaphase. Non disjunction occurs during anaphase. It can be anaphase 1 or it can be anaphase 2. Anaphase 1 or it can be anaphase 2. So, what is this non disjunction? Check here. I'm going to show you how. Someone is asking me that, can I please repeat bivalent or bivalent? Bivalent is when homologous chromosomes are under crossing over. Chromosomes are, chromosomes under crossing over is called bivalent or bivalent. Yes, that's what I said. All right, now come back here. You have chromosomes in meta phase. Sometimes students uh, fail to understand the... Um, Chromosomes under mera phase. The chromosomes must be in the equator. Equator is an imaginary line. An imaginary line. We just imagine. We just imagine a line which is happening. Yes? It's called what? Equator. But we say that it's the center of the cell. So these chromosomes must be at the center of the cell. This thing must be on the sides, must be on the sides. Unfortunately, I have not used the camera. I would have showed you, you'd have seen me when I'm trying to say sides so that, but you have to know that, make sure that the, the, the centrioles are inside so that you, sometimes we twist it so that we confuse you, so that you go out, so that you, we know that you, you, if you just cram, then gone. So they must be on sides. So they can ask you, draw a cell after cell before, or, crossing um, um, uh, non-disjunction. How is this non-disjunction? How this cell going to lead to non-disjunction? Now, if the, these spindles contract and they pull this chromosome, now this whole set is pulled to this side. And then this one, this one comes this side, this one comes this side. You result in a cell whereby this cell has one plus this. And then this one, because the whole thing went to the, sorry, la, uh, because this one went this side and the whole thing of this went to this side. Let me show you. Let me, let me do like this. Né? Let me do like this. Let me do like this. Uh, let me do like that so that... Yeah. So it means that this part came to this side. This one came to this side while this one came to this side. It means that now this cell is going to have one, two, three, three chromosomes. What about this side? It's going to have only one. I think now this one 
is 3 instead of 2. And then this one is 1 instead of instead of 2. I think. So because there's 1, therefore it's going to call it monosome. Well, because this one has 3 instead of 2, it's going to be called be, 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 be it trisome. I think. How does this lead to Down syndrome? How does this lead to Downing's syndrome? I think. So it means that now, if this paralyzes the ovum, then it's going to lead to an individual less of one chromosome. If this paralyzes the ovum, it's going to lead to a, uh, an individual with an extra chromosome. And this is called Down syndrome. But it's not called Down syndrome, except it has occurred on chromosome number 21. So which chromosome number is chromosome number 21? Sometimes... When we bring these karyotypes, uh, okay, I think I used it. No, no, no. Karyotype. What is karyotype? Uh, sometimes, okay, I wanted to show you. Uh, sometimes we bring it and then we confuse you on the karyotype. Ne? And then we ask you, uh, how, how? Did, 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 yes, check here. Ne? On this chromosome number, they, they put another one there. And they ask you, is this chromosome individual fine? What is, how many chromosomes? Yeah, how many chromosomes are there? Because you know that this is an individual, individual is supposed to have uh, 23 pairs. We know you just say 23 pairs or 46 chromosomes. Wrong. Check before you conclude anything. Please check the chromosome number 21. I'm done with that. Let's go to, to this. They are saying that drawing, a drawing, we have shown it, but a drawing, it must have a title. Ne? Must have a title. When they ask you to shade, for example, if the chromosome is like this, and this one is shaded, ne? please, when you draw, still draw it like that and it's shaded. If you shade it down, shade it down. If you shade it up, shade it up. After that, label. Have some two labels. I want to give you one thing students always mess up with is mera phase listen carefully don't go away ana phase yes then telo phase i'm gonna say this mera phase two ana phase two telo phase two when these chromosomes let me show you let me show you here down let me show you here down uh -huh. when these two chromosomes when these chromosomes look i have it here when they're under mera phase we call them chromosome when they are under they are being pulled now ne? they are being pulled to opposite poles ne? like this these are not chromosomes these are now chromatids but the moment they reach the poles we don't call them chromatids we call them single-stranded chromosomes unreplicated chromosomes or single-stranded chromosomes we only call them chromatids if they are at the under anaphase they are being pulled here they are chromosome these are replicated chromosomes or double-stranded chromosomes these ones are called chromatids the moment they reach the pole in telophase it becomes what it becomes it becomes unreplicated chromosome. Don't call them chromatid. Yes. Uh -huh. Let's go back to this last question of uh, meiosis. Then we will, and then we conclude it. Yes. Okay, now, they are saying, <clears throat> um, they are saying that um, drawing variation. What is variation? Variation is the difference among organisms of the same species. Variation is the difference among organisms of the same species. Don't compare mangoes and oranges. 
don't compare dogs and pigs. That's not variation. Variation must be comparing dogs. Dogs, dogs. Variation is the difference among organisms of the same species. It must be the same species. Yes. Now, what are some of the causes of variation? If you're comparing humans, you must compare humans. So what are some of the causes of variation? The causes of variation is... Now, the major mistake students do in this exam, if they ask you three causes of variation, the first thing the student is going to say, uh, is going to say that the first cause of uh, variation... Uh, in, in, in or genetic variation is going to say that meiosis. Yeah, we shall say correct. And then the next point is going to say crossing over. We're going to say thank you. Then it's going to say um, random arrangement of chromosomes during uh-huh mera phase we're gonna say yes but no why why are we crossing it when it's correct it's because you mentioned here meiosis and meiosis involves crossing over and random arrangement of chromosomes so if they ask you this question please remove meiosis don't think about meiosis then you talk about crossing over random arrangement of chromosomes there are four we will not put you this. We will give you a tick here and we'll give you a tick here. So you see, you have got two marks. Then plus, you can talk about mutation, random fertilization. Unless they have said that give three causes of variation during meiosis or during the process of meiosis. Then now you talk about crossing over, talk about random arrangement of chromosome, and then you can talk about uh, mutation. Then you don't talk about random fertilization, don't talk about random um, uh, random fertilization or random mating. You don't talk about it. Yes. Yeah, I think um, that is the meiosis. Can we check and see? There is one question you you usually lose marks. How many number of chromosomes? That question is always killing students. Is always, always killing students. Is always killing students. All right. Let's go through this question paper. This one. Then they're saying that what is A? A is a cell membrane, not nuclear membrane. You can't see nuclear membrane uh, when a, a phase is meiosis, is, is, is mera phase. Spindle fibers, then this is a chromosome. Yes? Identify the phase of meiosis ident uh, above. Because they are single, single chromosomes, therefore it's going to become, it's going to become what? It's going to become mera phase because they are single single mera phase two if they are double double this becomes mera phase one mera phase one but here single single mera phase two all right uh -huh. let's go to another question uh -huh. they are saying that what is a we have seen it what is b we have seen it give one observable reason for your answer chromosomes align along the equator singly individually that's if you don't say singly zero or individually zero it must have that word individually or singly chromosomes align along the equator one mark singly what about sorry what about mm, describe the role of b in the movement of these chromosomes during meiosis b is spindle fibers they pull the chromosome the chromatids in this case the chromatids to opposite poles they try to shorten when they shorten they pull the chromatids to opposite poles charlotte are you still here all right let's continue draw it uh, uh. this is the question i was talking about you can't go without put the title good after putting the title what next what next what next uh -huh. you talk about 
you draw because they're saying that draw a diagram of c structure c they're saying structure c ne? as it would appear in the final phase of this meiotic division they are saying only c so if they're saying structure c they're not saying draw the cell how it will appear since they're saying structure c then automatically you're gonna draw this okay let's see structure c you have two options y two options then this chromosome you see it's one so you draw that chromosome with the central mayor there while you can draw this one also draw the same thing with the central mayor there are you seeing but now this one is shaded this one is not shaded why because it is colorless see nothing shaded this one is shaded therefore you shade it up i think when you shade it up what next mm -hmm. so it's gonna be it's gonna be like this but now where do i go get where am i going to get the 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 the, the, the max remember they saying final stage final stage has has a nucleus so this chromosome must be in the nucleus don't forget that at the final stage you have the centrioles you also put the centrioles in there centrioles are outside the nucleus then after that please give a title and then you label cell membrane nuclear membrane now okay ah uh, you can talk about a uh, centrio a uh, non-centrio centromere and then now this is not a chromatid this is a chromosome the chromosome i talked about that these are called unreplicated chromosomes these are unreplicated chromosomes yes so i think uh you understand it uh very well i think you really understand it very well no no i think you got it right now ne? if you have not got it right please let me know let me know all right uh -huh. now let's go to another sabu topic hey there is one which which stresses you how many chromosomes will be there at the beginning of this cell how many chromosomes are here oh how many chromosomes are in this cell so now people always confuse please if they don't mention this is a human cell don't think about 46 chromosomes unless they have said this is a human cell if they have not said this is a human cell no you are not supposed to draw both you only have to draw one because they say draw a diagram Labor the diagram not diagrams ne? someone is asking should we draw two no we only draw one yes or follow the instruction what is it saying but in most cases they want one but when you're marking we draw the two and then we see uh, which one to give you ne? basically d depending on which one you have drawn on the memorandum the answer is there then we will do that yes uh -huh. all right now and when you are marking we don't just mark we just have to mark the title we just mark the title we mark the shading the shading is correct maybe uh then we mark maybe two labels or the correct diagram one label and then the correct diagram then here all right they're saying that how many chromosomes are found here in this cell someone is gonna say 23 I ask you a question 23 from where this is not 23 i see two chromosomes why do you say 23 so it's gonna be two chromosomes people are always talking about 23 23 why how many chromosomes will there be at the end of this cell in in, in, in telophase two there will be two because this is meiosis two the meiosis two maintains the number of chromosomes another question sorry then they're asking you how many chromosomes were there uh, how many chromosomes were there in the same phase of meiosis one the way are four because meiosis one has the chromosome number 
So if Moses 1 is 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 is, is 5, then Moses 2 is going to be eh uh, if Moses 1 is 10, Moses 1 is Moses if Moses 1 is 10, Moses 1 is going to be Moses 2 is going to be 5. So it it is there is half the chromosome number. So please you only if they say this is a human cell. Sometimes they ask you that. How many chromosomes will there be present in the same phase as a human cell? Now, here, because it's Moses 2, then you talk about 23. But if they don't talk about human, please and please, I beg you, don't talk about 23. Uh -huh. All right. Then they are saying that, lastly, about meiosis, before uh, I go to, uh, uh, I go to genetics, ne? I show you the, 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 the six marks which are going to come from genetics, and then I show you the simple, simple questions, the way we are trying to define them. Share the video to others so that they don't miss out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and also drop the question which you really want me to sort out. All right. <clears throat> Question. What is the importance of meiosis? What is meiosis? What is the importance of meiosis? The reason why we have meiosis is to have the half the chromosome number. So that this doubling effect, because you remember sperm, sperm, let me show you, sperm, the spam, we'll call it spam, ne? All right. The spam, what happens? Mm, this, uh, uh, this technology, I bought. Okay. I hope it's right now. The spam will bring 23. And then the ovum will also bring 23. So when they fuse during my uh, fertilization, you form 46. Yes? So my sister must divide them again so that they form 23, 23. So that's why we are saying that it, it it, it, it reduces the chromosome number or it halves the chromosome number or it, it solves the problem of the doubling effect of fertilization. Number one, that is it. Number two, the major importance of meiosis is to produce gametes. Produce gametes. Gametes, these are the sperms and ova. Or ovum. Number three, where does meiosis take place? Where does meiosis take place? Meiosis takes place in testes, in human, and then in 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 in, in ovary, that is female. Anthers in plants that is male, and the ovary that is a uh, female. For the case of plants, you have to know those things. I think I've exhausted the questions of meiosis, unless someone is having, someone is saying that uh, load shedding is coming. Oh, sorry. And then, uh, okay. Can I make it down downloadable? I cannot make it downloadable until it is, it is, I'm, I'm offline, I'm offline. Uh, one, the moment I'm done, I'm done, I'm completely done, then to be be able to... Uh, uh, this one is asking me that, how do I know the number I must count? The number is shown there. If Look at this. This is a one, two, three. Uh -huh. Let me check here. Okay, let me look for another question here. You will see. Uh, the numbers. Eh? Sorry when I'm looking for the question. Eh? Mm -hmm. Okay, that one. Uh, this one we are done with it. What about this? Let me check here. Uh, how do I know the number? How do I know the number? Oh. Uh, in this case, we don't have, but this is the crossing over. This is the thing uh, I was talking about, the process of crossing over. Eh? Uh, centromere, chromosome, chiasma, this is a bivalent still. It's also a bivalent still. Also, there's a bivalent. But uh, depends. You see now the, the crossing over here, there are two. So when they are drawing, for example, you have to draw them. In this case, you draw them up. You draw them up here. You draw them 
two times. So, um, I think I'm ex uh, ex I've exhausted. But what you see, if the the, the, the cell, if the cell is showing you, uh, if the cell is showing you chromosome one, chromosome two, chromosome three, like this, and then they ask you how many chromosomes are there. These are the number of cells, number of chromosomes, one, two, three. So tell us three. How many will be there in meiosis one of the same phase? They will be because it's meiosis two is single strand. Uh, chromosomes are uh, one one. Therefore, it's gonna be six in meiosis two. Unless they say that, the, how many will be there in the same phase of meiosis, but for human? I say that if they don't talk about human, forget about. You see now? Uh -huh. Here is the question. Oh, where in the human female body would this type of cell division? Uh -huh. This is where does meiosis take place in female? I've answered this, and I say that ovary. Give a letter name of the structure that attached to the spindle fiber, which is C, and then this case is the central central male. How many chromosomes will there will be found in each letter cell at the end of meiosis? Now we'll come back here and see. The diagram show represents uh, the chromosome in in the cell that is undergoing normal cell division you see it's undergoing normal cell division so now they're asking how many chromosomes will there be found in each daughter cell at the end of uh, this cell division how many chromosomes how many chromosomes are you seeing here this is chromosome one chromosome two chromosome three chromosome four chromosome five chromosome six because they are still under meiosis one so at the end of this cell division it will be half the chromosome number whereby one two three four five six so it means that the answer is going to be three i think um chantelle i think i've answered the, your 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 answer correctly correctly Yes. Please share the video so that the others can also benefit. Others can also benefit. Ne? Uh, sometimes I do these lives uh, and then after that they, they, they look at it and they say, yo, I didn't see this live. So share it so that uh, even other people can benefit from this uh, live. All right. Let's go to our favorite uh, topic called genetics called what genetics share the video so that everyone can get all the marks in genetics genetics i'm not explaining too much of this but i'm explaining only what you expect in exam i'm not explaining the basics six marks questions six mark questions six mark question when you talk about six mark questions yes in genetics what are you supposed to look at number one genetic cross in this genetic cross you need to know when do i say sex link and when do I say non sex linked? Yes, sex linked and non sexy linked. I think Lord Shading is not there. I think so. On my side, ne? I think it's not there. Ne? I think they have changed the, the schedule. All right. Uh, non sexy linked. Sexy linked. Ne? All right. Number three is pedigree. You have to know the pedigree, but still here, you have to know whether it's sex or none. Another thing, disaster, bloody group. Bloody group. And then lastly, claw cloning. Here we are going to talk about biotech. All these questions are six marks. Six marks. I'm not saying this is what I'm going to talk about only. 
These are questions which come with the six marks. With the six marks. So if you mess them up, you lose. As I say that, each section we're going to have one which has five marks, six marks, seven marks. Latest. Oh, the worst is six marks. This, please don't lose them. Uh, don't lose these marks. Distinction. Distinction. Call your name Mr. and Mrs. Distinction. Tomorrow we have to crush the paper. All right. Let's continue. <clears throat> genetic cross. But before I start genetic cross, I've, uh, I, I've not talked about terminologies. I've not talked about them. But I want to know this. What is a locus? What is a locus? Or a position of a gene along a chromosome is called locus. Eh? Now, when do I use sex linked and when don't I use sex linked? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go through this. Eh? After that, I go back. I will show you. When you're doing the genetic cross, guys, even if you don't know anything, just write P1 space F1. We shall come and give you a tick. So you can't go to the paper without having this. So you have gone to the paper when you know. When you say genetic cross, before even thinking P1 F1, you get a tick. Okay, this is a phenotype. Phenotype is always given in the, in the question. They will say that, Blue eyes, married, black eyes. You see, you come here and say blue eyes crossed with black eyes. That's a mark. Another mark you have got. After that, you say genotype. This is the only disaster which is there. We're going to look at it. And then now, uh, what about here? Now we say uh, phe phenotype. Ne? Uh, we are done. Genotype, we are done. Then now you go to meiosis. 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 We we'll only have meiosis if you have the gametes. For example, if I have T. Ah, okay, sorry. I think uh, some people are not seeing there. Let me just draw it here. They are saying that, okay. Uh, P1, F1. I'm going to show you when do you write P2. Ne? Because sometimes, yeah, but you saying P1, F1, Mark. They say... Geno, pheno, pheno, phenotype. Yeah. Phenotype is always given in the question. As I told you that you can say big head crossed with small head. And then they produce a baby who is a big head. You see? I don't know. Are you a big head or a small head? I don't know. All right. <laughs> then they are saying that big head, big head crossed with small head is given in the paper so you don't need to stress so you get a mark for this you get a mark for this now after that you go to geno genotype this is the only disaster i've talked about we're gonna look at it you have to identify it i'll show you for example t small t t small t now you go to meiosis yes uh -huh. they're saying meiosis meiosis they're saying t small t T small t, which are these are gametes. You see, now gametes in most cases we love it when you circle them. You know why? Because sometimes people try to bring this to close together, and once you bring them together like this, we cross. We don't give you a tick. So make sure that I prefer always. I tell my students, since you are my student now, circle them, circle them. The moment you circle them, at least we shall know that. Oh, sorry, we shall know that nothing even if they're too close since you have circled them still we will give you a, a, a mark now then after that you talk about fertilization where you have the crosses now you mentioning meiosis and fertilization is another mark in most cases this question is six marks so you have got one mark two marks three marks so, so you have got 50 out 50 out of how much? Out of six. Fifty percent. You have got it. Before whether stress have started or not, whether you got these things correct or wrong, as long as you have that, you have the three marks. Alright. Now, you continue. You cross this. Okay. 
I'm gonna show you another way how you you lose max né? and how to benefit uh, get max this t t with the t and then this with this t with the t this with this t with the t then this with this small t with the small t now these are offsprings listen in the question sometimes we put what you call compulsory mark né? we put what you call compulsory mark né? when you are talking about compulsory mark uh, someone is asking me if i'm gonna do cloning i'm coming there to cloning né? compulsory mark for example if this is a compulsory mark even if you get one two three so it's one two three four five six and if this question is five marks and they say this is a compulsory mark even if you say one two three four five six you got six but you lost the compulsory mark we won't give you six no we'll give you four we'll give you four but if you write this 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 the three the other three they are obvious whether the compulsory mark is there whether the the, the, the compulsory mark is not there those three are secured you go to the paper when you have secured them then the other ones the compulsory mark depends on the question they have asked you in most cases they ask you show this then you do what you show the, that showing will lead to the compulsory mark i hope i'm clear on that uh -huh. then they are saying i'm gonna fire you a few questions here So the crossing, they, they, all of them, they do the same. Oh, I have not uh, spoken about determination of sex. Hmm? Sex. Ne? Don't forget to stay virgin. Ne? Determination of sex. Determination. Someone is asking. <laughs> all right. Sex determination. Someone is talking about meiosis. Meiosis, we finished it. Sex determination. Okay. But you'll be able to watch it um, when the live is done. All right. We are saying that. We are saying that. Question can come. And this always kills the student. How many genes control blood group? How many genes control blood group? Uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Ne? Just now. Just type. How many genes control blood group? I'm waiting before I continue. How many genes control blood group? Let me see. Who is the first one to answer? How many genes control blood group? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Definitely. Mutations. Yes, I'll talk about the mutations. Uh -huh. How many genes control blood group? Yes, I'll cover every topic. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll cover every topic. How many genes? Guys, type. Type. I want to see the answer. How many genes control blood group? I'm not seeing the answer. Four. Someone is saying four. Thank you. Uh, how many genes control blood group? I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for the answer. Type, type, type. Uh, someone, another one saying, I think four. All right. Thank you. How many genes control blood group? Tell me, tell me, Chantel. Yeah, okay. I think four. Thank you. Uh, I want to know. I want to know. How many genes control blood group? Three. How many genes? Hey, okay, guys. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah. Now, since we are looking for the distinction, there are not four. It's only one gene. The gene, it is one gene, poly allele. One gene. One gene. Which gene is that? Blood type. Blood group is only one gene. Are we together? How many alleles control blood group? There are three. One gene, remember, uh, which gene is that? Let me show you here. Yeah, after I said one, <laughs> after I gave it. Okay, uh, okay, bloody group, bloody group, ne? Bloody group, 
the gene is called it's like saying height ne? you're either tall or short is one gene which is height you see height you're either tall you're either tall height you're either tall or short you understand since it is it's one gene one gene of height but two alleles of tall and short so blood group the gene is blood glue group or type yes how many alleles there are three so say genes for blood group is one alleles there are three that is allele for a allele for b and allele for o sorry allele for o like that are we together yes thank you for those people who try to participate to, uh, to give the answers since we are looking for the distinction we can't go without knowing this gene one gene how many alleles three alleles ne? three alleles how many genotypes genotypes there are six yes genotypes there are six you have this remember a is either homozygous or heterozygous that's two b is either homozygous or heterozygous then you have that's one two three four then you have a b a b and then you have that for all that's it so three genes three sorry one gene three alleles three genotypes and then phenotypes you know types there are four which is a which is a b a b and o <clears throat> so basically that is it Oh, A B, yes, A is A B is codominant. Yeah, O is the uh, uh, this is homozygous. Ne? this is the codominant or heterozygous. No, no, codominant. This is heterozygous. This is homozygous, heterozygous, homozygous. So there are six of them. One gene, three alleles, six genotypes, four, four. Uh, for what for um for 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 phenotypes now a tricky question can come a man who is blood group a married a lady who is blood group b and they produced a kid of blood group o show how this is possible a man of blood group A married a man, a woman of blood group B, and they produced a, a, a woman of blood group O. How is this possible? It means that once you find that question, for you to cross, it means that a man, because they are saying they produce a kid of blood group O, O is small i, small i. Before I go there, let me show you the mistake here you do. And we don't mark it. However much you love it, we don't mark it. Some people, they write blood group like this. A. What is this? This is not I. Don't write I like this. And you put a dot like that. I is like this. Don't write I like this. This is one in Romani figures. Check. You have sometimes you you have watches yeah, where it shows one, two, three. Yes, they are like that. So this is not I. This is one. This is two. This is three in Roman numerals or Roman figures. So don't write A like this. We won't give you a mark. 
However much some computers, yes, they do. You are not a computer. Right the way. Ah, use correctly. my distinction One material. A. Yes. Those people yes. who use my distinction so material, make sure that, that you, you got all these this simple, simple, simple things which might lead you to lose the distinction. To lose the distinction. For those people who have been using my book, a Distinction Material, you know exactly what I spoke about it and those people who have been watching the video. So it doesn't matter now. What matters here is for tomorrow's paper for you to crush it. All right. Now, we say that how is a man of blood group A marrying a lady of blood group B and they produce a kid of blood group O? One, know that blood group O, it has two eyes. Yes? Yes. Uh, if they have two eyes, how about this? Remember, A can be homozygous or it can be heterozygous. B can be B homozygous and heterozygous. Now, if I have O, which is II, yes, it means that I used this and this. Because if I make this and this, there is no way I'm going to produce these two. Even if I say this and this, there is no way. I'm going to only have one eye, small eye. Therefore, it's going to be heterozygous blood group A. So when you talk about the genotype, it's going to be the, 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 the phenotype. So I'm going to say P1F1. Genotype, phenotype, pheno, phenotype. I'm going to say a crossed with B. And then I say genotype, genotype, I'm going to say A, heterozygous, crossing with B, heterozygous. Then meiosis will take place. Some people, they then say A, I, B, this is B, ne? I. And then I circle them. Please don't put a, a cross here. Please don't. You'll get it, you'll get it zero. You'll get zero there. Please don't put, don't put a cross there. Ne? Yes. Someone is asking why did you find the channel at the beginning? Uh, that's the answer for God. All right. Uh -huh. Now, let's continue. Let's continue, guys. But you can tell your grade 11 or your sisters, your brothers, subscribe the channel. Look for MCID. Yeah. You always, uh, you always, you always, you always. Uh, find the content there. All right. Now, look. Now, this is gametes. Gametes. So, if these are gametes, now, what happens here? You can draw, a, use a peanut square method, or you can just cross. Whatever you want, still, it is fine. For example, let me use the penal square because I've been using the cross. So you draw your penal square here and then you say, okay, you have A, you have I here. You have B, you have I here. Small I. And then now you cross, you're going to say this is A, B. Ne? This is going to be uh, B. And then this is going to be uh, A. And then this is going to be O. You see? You see? These are offsprings. Offsprings. You see, now this one produced a person who is blood group or that's how it was possible. It can even come in the 20, uh, in, in the 7 mark question. Those, that's why I showed you those crosses. Those crosses. So please, blood group should not be a problem. Which blood group is, um, now I'm done with the long question of blood group. Few questions now. Which blood group is a universal donor? And which blood group is a universal recipient? Blood group A. No, blood group AB receives from every, 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 every blood group. Well, blood group O donates. So, blood group O is a universal donor. Some people, when they are blood group O, yeah, they think they are, yeah, their blood is strong, they feel good. No! It's worse. Why? Because if you lose blood, if you need blood, we have to look for only one person with blood group O. But if your blood group AB, you are lucky. Anybody who comes, you can, can donate that blood to you. So blood group AB becomes a universal recipient. It receives from 
everybody. Why blood group O is a universal donor? Only donates to anyone. Someone is asking me that why these crossings are not allowed. The crossings are not allowed here, here, because this they are not crossing. They are already gametes. After that, you, 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 you can draw your crosses here. Ne? So the crossing here, the cross here, no, it's not allowed there. It's, 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 it's not uh, allowed. Crossing here is fine. If you cross them, it's fine. You can either use the peanut square or you can just do the crossing. All right. Uh, um, let's go to, uh, we talked about the blood group. Uh -huh. I'm coming back with the cloning, ne? cloning, or oh, I'll give you one tip of, uh, of, 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 of an example of, okay, let me give, give you the, the question because I just want to go just for two Two or three minutes, yes, three minutes. Let me give you a, 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 just one question for you to practice. Practice for me uh, is six marks, ne? Yes, this one. It's a simple question. There is something behind it, most especially on this question, on this question. I need to see so that you don't lose that mark. Please do that for me, ne? Do that for me. Then after that, I'm going to do it uh, again for you. Um, what's the time is 39. I'm giving you four minutes, four minutes to finish. Ne? I will be back. I will be back. Eh? I'm saying I will be back. I hope you are, you are done. Eh? Hope you are done. Hope you are done. Okay. Oh, uh, come on, saying, yeah, it's done, it's done. All right. In the way, ne? All right. Okay. That's nice. That's nice. Okay, now let's go through it. They're saying. Diagram below, okay, uh, controlled by R and R. Check here. The first point is R, R and W. These are capital letters. The moment they are capital letters, it means that both of them are dominant. All right. Now, they're saying red cross with white produce pink. You see, they have three phenotypes. The moment you have three phenotypes, it means that that is incomplete. Incomplete. Dominancy. It is incomplete dominancy. Incomplete dominancy. A. The question is here. State the type of dominancy shown uh, in the uh, snapdragon plant. Here is the incomplete dominancy. Give a reason for your answer because a third phenotype is given or an intermediate is given. You see? A third phenotype is given or an intermediate is given. Now, if it is complete, if I had the, if it was complete, complete, ne? I would have been with red and white. I either produce red or white. Which one is dominant? Depending on which one is dominant. And then if I have codominance, red and white, I would have produced a mixture of red and white. But because this one is, 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 is pink, a third phenotype, therefore, or an intermediate, therefore it is incomplete dominancy. The same gardener crossed two pink flowered snapdragon plants using the genetic cross uh, uh, show the ratio of uh, expressed um, of the expressed phenotypes in the offsprings. Now, remember I told you that the first thing you need to know, you need to do is to write P1 P1, F1. But, in this case, they're saying they crossed 
they crossed to pink. To pink. Pink is found on the second generation. There are four. There are four. It won't be P1. F1. It will be P2. F2. Ah, in most cases, students lose that mark. Ne? If it is the second generation, then you say P2. F2. If the first generation, then you say P1. F1. Ne? Yes. So now, there you talk about uh, pheno, phenotype, which is pink. I told you that this is obtained from the question. Check. They are saying, what are they saying? Check what are they saying. They're saying, genetic cross showed um, a gardener crossed two pink flowered snapdragon plants. Is always obtained from there. Are you seeing? Then now, so it means that I've got a tick here. I've got a tick there. And also, I've got a tick there. So now, two marks. Uh -huh. Now, they're saying that pink, remember, they say that uh, white is capital W. And red, red is capital W. Capital R, white is capital W. Therefore, pink is going to be capital W, capital, capital R, capital W, whatever. Capital W, capital R, or capital R, capital W. It's the same thing. So it's going to be capital R, capital W, crossing with capital R, capital W. But this is the geno, genotype. See, now you get another tick. Then they're saying that uh, meiosis, 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 uh-huh will take place and then you have capital R, capital W, capital R, capital W. I said don't leave these so-called gametes to be as if they're at the beach. No beach, ne? at the beach, ne? you live naked, ne? you enjoy yourself. Ne? Don't leave them naked. Try to dress them up. Try to dress them what? Try to dress them up. Eh? At the beach? Ah, so try to dress them up so that ne? Yeah, they are not there at the waters there when they are enjoying their life ne? try to dress them up so that you separate them even if they are too close to one another you won't lose a mark for that you won't then after that you do the crossing or you do a pinot square so cross with r capital r capital r capital w capital r capital w uh -huh, because i started with r i will start with r capital r capital w and then capital w Capital W, whereby these are offsprings. Those are offsprings. Now, if those are offsprings, what is it? R, this is red, this is pink, and then this is white. Meaning that uh, I will have, I will have, I will have uh, one red, one, two pink, and then uh one 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 white there is a mistake where the student do whereby they ask you the ratio in this case you write one to two to to one ne? some people when they ask them the ratio they 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 they, 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 they write expression and sometimes when they ask you the when they ask you the the the, the expression they write the, 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 the percentage. So, when they ask you the ratio, please write the ratio. If they ask you the egg, how many were red, how many were red, eh? or what is the percentage of individuals, uh, individual plants which were red, then you have to say it's one out of what is the total. The total is four times a hundred then you give us the answer you give us the word the answer as 25 percent please don't don't forget that all right uh -huh. let's continue and we say and we say uh our question our question 
is uh, I think I've uh, exhausted that pedigree. Let's just look at one question here, which involves the pedigree. And then we can go to our... Oh, there is one question here for blood group. Hmm? There's one question here for blood group. But I think we exhausted the blood group. But you see that blood group also has five marks. Explain why par, uh, paternity of the boy could not be established using the blood group. Why is paternity test is not able to be established? To, like, like to con conclude that this is the, the father of the individual. It's because many people have the same type of blood group. So you can't say that, as I showed you that, it's blood group A, married blood group B, and then produce blood group O, still they produce blood group AB, still they produce blood group B. So whom are you going to say that is not the father, who is, or whom are you going to say that is the father? So it means that you end up losing the what? The mark. All right. Why is it not conclusive? Why is it not conclusive? Because many people have the same type of blood group. But if they ask you, explain why parental test for this situation, you will say that the mother is blood group O. You see, the mother is blood group O. While the boy is blood group A, B. Blood group B. So of which the boy can be A, sorry, can be B, heterozygous O. The boy can't be uh, 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 homozygous. Why? Because the mother is II. So it's one from the mother. So the, 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 the genotype of the boy is heterozygous. Now, this one can give yes the B. Ne? And also this one can give the B. So whom are you going to say is the father? Whom are you going to say is not the father? So that's why in this case, blood group can only help you to eliminate, to eliminate those uh, possibilities which cannot happen. For example, a person of blood group, this father, the father can't be blood group A because this person is blood group B, you see? So if it's blood group A, there is no way how the boy is going to have blood group B. So... If a man, there is a man, another man who is blood group B, so blood group A, that one is wiped out. You understand? And then another man who is blood group O cannot be, so blood group A and blood group O, they are wiped out. Why? Because if it is small I, small I, the boy is, is, is blood group B. So there is no way how this boy is going to get a B from the father who is blood group O, yet the mother is already known as blood group O. You see? So that is the meaning that you can't use blood group to conclude the father of the individual. Because your blood group B, you can't say that this is my child because this child of mine is blood group B. There are so many people who have the same type of blood group. And the, the possibilities of having these are many. I hope you understand me better. Uh -huh. Now, how do you write this? It means that this one is only blood group A and blood group O are going to all, only be wiped out. So the blood group A and blood group O, they cannot be the father. So you get those two marks already. And then uh, this blood group, the male A can give uh, this allele for B to the boy. So it, it can be the father. Or blood, this one also can also give one allele for B and gets another one from here. Also can be the what? Can be the father. That's why uh, we cannot conclude using blood group who is the father of this boy. As I repeat that, blood group can only be used to eliminate the possibilities which cannot happen in a situation. Who is the biological father of the boy using the DNA profile? Now you have to check and see. Uh, you will see that it is this and this, this. Mm hmm you see that is male, male, male what? Male, 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 male too. Give the reason is because the remaining bands of DNA profile match with the male. The remaining, they must match. If there is one which is not matching, then automatically it's not the father. Might be a relative, but might not be the what? The father. Remember, all the genes that this boy or this baby is having is mother and the father. So if you take out all the mother's genes, yeah, of because the mother is known now the remaining bands of this boy must be those ones of the father let me show you what i'm trying to say ne? this mother okay this one is not for them yes this one is corresponding ne? so 
uh, this one is out this one corresponds uh, this thing is now jamming all right corresponds this one corresponds oh this one corresponds yes uh, this one is not matching so this one is not matching this one is not matching this one corresponds ne? is out this one is not matching this one uh, is not matching because this is not uh, this one is matching so now all of those ones which have ex must match with the male who is the father that's why i'm saying that the remaining bands of the boy after those ones of mother have been removed they must match with the father okay this one yes it matches you see this one yes it matches you see this one is matching with this this one is matching this that's why we say that individual two is the father uh, male two is the father of the boy because the remaining bands of the of the boy have matched with the male uh with male two all right now let's go to just one example of a pedigree pedigree diagram pedigree diagram yeah pedigree where are you pedigree pedigree and then i show you how you can use it to answer and also to score a mark they are saying hemophilia is a uh, uh, that statement is enough this statement hemophilia is a sex linked trait hemophilia is a sex linked what trait meaning that if it is a sex linked trait huh what is it it means what, what does it mean it means that you're gonna use x and y please if they don't say is a sex linked in exam don't use x and y you're gonna get it wrong is a sex linked disorder don't use x and y if it is not mentioned in the in the question so here it is mentioned sex linked or sometimes they don't say sex linked they say that hemophilia the gene is carried on x chromosome still that is sex linked if it's not mentioned please don't don't even bother don't even waste your time don't don't even waste your time to uh uh-huh let me show you here one of the differences in human is carried on, uh, on a single allele the diagram below shows yeah done they are not talking about sex linked however much they talk about paul and you know that paul is a, a boy yeah liz is a girl mary is a girl uh john is a boy however much you know that please don't use x and y please don't use x and y so if they don't mention is sex linked don't use x and y if they mention sex linked then you talk about x and y how many generations are here there are three one two three they are saying that uh -huh. and then number two it can be caused by uh something can be caused by a recessive allele or it can be caused by a dominant allele anyway let's continue with this question they are saying state what is represented by a circle or a diagram I wanted to tell you that that sometimes we don't bring that a circle is a male uh, no 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 a, a box is a male a circle is 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 a female sometimes don't give you that key you have to go to the exam when you know that all right uh -huh. now they're saying what are they saying okay now they are saying this is a boy this is a how many individual let, 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 let me brainstorm you this is affected with the hemophilia don't say he's sick he's sick of what sick sick of sick sick of what malaria ne? sick of what sick of hemophilia or oh, is hemophilic all right how many kids are produced by p and q they are how many it's one two three four five i know many people are gonna say that it's not they are not five one two three four five no this one is an intruder this one intruder this one got married this this one got married this so there are only three kids how many generations are here one two three there are three generations you understand what is the phenotype the genotype or the phenotype they can ask you what is the genotype or phenotype of p or q whatever they can ask but if it is shaded it means that that individual is affected now they're saying that state 
what is represented by a circle we have said that the circle means ml state the number of genera a we have talked about them there are three generations one two three offsprings p and q state the number of offspring p uh, gosh, the same thing is this this and this this one and this ones they are only and only got married to that so they are intruders state uh they're saying that let us um give the letters of only male who are having hemophilia letters of the of the female female is t and the female is u those are the only two people who are having hemophilia why because they are shared and then lastly the genotype of r the genotype of r now how do we find the genotype of r look at the babies or look at the parents first look at the babies it can help you if you see that the baby is one baby is hemophilic then automatically the 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 the, 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 the mother is gonna be heterozygous so the mother is gonna remember that here you have x and y y doesn't carry anything y doesn't carry anything so it's x and y so y does not carry anything at all all right i think now uh, okay so since this one is sick it means that and is a boy so it's gonna be like this it's gonna be this is a recessive allele so if it's a recessive allele obviously this can't come from the father because the father already gave the what the y therefore this came from the mother so it means that the mother since is normal is normal but a carrier so the mother is gonna be or r is gonna be capital a capital x capital x capital h small h and that becomes the that becomes the answer for that yes let's continue now let's continue so we are done with this we are done with this sex determination and biotechnology how do i explain sex determination sex determination sex determination is like describing a karyotype when ask you to do describe sex determination is like describing a karyotype but here if they ask you the genetic cross genetic cross you have to do the cross ne? so for example uh, if it's a cross you tell, tell us that p1 f1 everything ne? male uh, crossing with a female yeah and then you tell us that male is x you you tell us the phenotype here ne? and then you tell us the genotype uh -huh. male is x y and then female is xx then you cross then you tell us meiosis here you tell us um gametes they come out here they come out and then i'm gonna explain i'm gonna show you how to write it if they say using a genetic cross and then also show you how do you describe if they ask you to describe <laughs> then these are gametes these are gametes uh-huh then they cross they cross then they cross they cross then this and this cross y and then this and this uh they cross like that so uh this is the offsprings meaning that you have 25 per, uh, 50 percent chance of having boys boys and 50 percent chance of having uh having girls what about those who have girls 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 oh boys 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 yes even if you have a boy here the next time you have 50 percent of a boy again even if you have another boy you the next generation you have the next reproductive cycle you're gonna have still 50 percent chance of having a what having a boy so it depends on how do you roll your dice and how how many chances do you have to have a boy there are 50 but you are just lucky that you have what boys or you are lucky you to have what to have girls so in this case we are saying that uh 50 boys 50 girls yeah uh if they ask you to describe you tell us that uh individuals uh uh humans are made up of 46 chromosomes ne? the 23rd pair is called gonosome it's either x and x or x and y 
if x and x if a male sperm with x fertilizes the female ovum it will result in x and x the individual will be a female if a male sperm having y fertilizes the ovum remember ovum is always x the individual will be x and y and therefore will be a male there are 50 percent chance of having a male and 50 percent chance of having a female that's how you can describe sexy linked so let's finish up the um, let's finish up uh cloning and then we go to evolution we finalize it with the evolution all right biotech cloning what is stem cells what are stem cells stem cells these are cells which have ability to divide to form other body structures to form other body structures imagine you are just a sperm you're just a sperm ne? sperm fused with the ovum you formed a zygote a zygote the zygote you remember this paper one formed a ball of cells ne? which called the morula you see morula is a stem cell because here if i ask you i ask you show me the eye show me the legs show me the chest show me the show me the you can't show me it's just a ball of cells so these cells they have ability to divide again to form other body body structures you understand yeah you form other body what structures and then yes you become yes you have the eyes you have the ears you have the everything you so we call them stem cells those are cells which have the ability to divide to form other body structures all right give me two examples of stem cells umbilical adipose tissue bony marrow so you have to know those stem cells sometimes we bring this as an extract uh -huh. let me check and see let me check and see if i have any question regarding two stem cells this is gene calculate the percentage of uh, okay this is gene uh oh i skipped something which is very 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 very, very important that is the dihybrid cross yes let me leave it there so that uh, i don't forget again dihybrid i want to show you how do you identify the 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 the, the, the genotype how do you identify the genotypes using the gametes because that is a very problematic question okay so in this case um i can't find the question there all right now let's go to cloning i only want to discuss about cloning here ne? yes about the what ia cloning yes i have sheep a i have sheep b ne? i get a cell of sheep a from the skin let me say somatic somatic and then this one i get it from ovum ne? what i do i remove the nucleus of this i go with the nucleus ne? i throw away this shell well here i go with the shell but i throw away the nucleus i fuse them using electrical method and then i form a cell which looks like a zygote it looks like a zygote now this zygote i put it into another animal a foster mother animal yes yes and then 
what I do? I produce a lot of uh, these animals. And these animals are identical. Identical. Question. Why are all these animals identical? They are identical because when this forms a zygote, it forms a ball of cells. Now, this ball of cells, now I divide these balls. balls. Now, I'll have small balls, small balls, small balls. And then the small balls, I keep on going and then insert them in different other sheep. Ne? So, it means because I use the same genetic material, obviously, these ones, they are going to be identical. It's because it's the same genetic material which was used. Now, a question. Will these... Uh, babies look like B or will look like A? They will look like B. Why? Because I use the nucleus of B. I didn't use the nucleus of A. Why did I use the nucleus, the, 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 the shell or the casing of B? It's because I wanted this to look like a zygote because what is outside is an ovum. You understand? It's like drinking alcohol in a cup i won't say that you're drinking alcohol i will say that you're drinking tea so because the outside is a casing of the nucleus therefore this will look like a zygote and because this one is diploid to n they can ask you how many chromosomes are found in this because it's a somatic cell somatic cells are always diploid you see Somatic cells are always deployed. Someone is asking me to do the part of evolution. I'm coming there. I'm finalizing genetics here. And then I'm coming to evolution. So because this one is 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 is, is what is a somatic cell, therefore automatically this is going to be a uh, diploid. And then because it's brought in the uh, a casing of the ovum. So it's going to look like a what? A zygote. And now I split them in two small pieces. And then I insert them in different sheep. And each sheep will produce identical, identical what? Identical sheep. Yes. I think uh, I'm done there. I'm done there. Sorry. I'm done there. All right. Now, lastly on genetics is this question of the dihybrid cross. Identify what is Z. You just have to know. Cross this and this, and then you write what is said. What is the genotype of the parents? Now, how do I identify the genotypes of the parent? Genotype of the parent. Look at the gametes. Look at the gametes. You'll find the genotypes from there. Start with F, for example. You write the F. It, if it is repeated, you leave it. Is there any other small F? Yes, the small F is there. Then go to capital H. Yes. Is there any other small small H? Yes, it's there. Done. Look at them. Look at them. If there was no, if all of them were capital H, ne? All of them were capital H, ne? For example, capital H, uh, even here capital H. I would have said, do I have F? Yes. Do I have small F? Yes. Do I have capital H? Yes. Do I have small H? No. They are all capital H. Done. That's how you can identify. Simple. No stress. They are saying that. Number of the okay, uh, number of the genotype that could result in offspring that is short finger and uh, short is dominant, ne? and then this one is recessive because it's a recessive. I need to have with the small h as long as I have capital H, is one, is two, uh, is one, is two, yours, and then uh, yeah, it's three, so there are three. And then allele that for continuous hairline. Allele, not genotype. So it's going to be small, small H. The genotype of the child that is heterozygous recessive for both alleles. So it's this one, which is small f, small f. Yes. So this dihybrid cross, simple, simple. You should not go to the exam when you don't know anything. Welcome to evolution. Evolution now, evolution. Evo, evo, eh, eh. Okay, evolution. 
let's look at evolution by natural selection uh this one does not have too many questions uh which i'm gonna speak about but it has many questions in human evolution however these days we we are setting uh evolution by natural selection than human evolution I think Mutasi, uh, now we are on you now. Ne? Share the video so that now uh, people can join for evolution. Ne? They are, because they find a lot of challenges uh, with the evolution. Evolution, um, what is a hypothesis? What is a theory? You have to go when you know the difference. Ne? Yes. Hypothesis uh, basically is a tentative statement which is subjected to be tested. It can be uh, proven correct or wrong. And then a theory, basically what you need to look at is uh is 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 a, a statement which has been proven by facts you understand situation which is being proven by facts so it means that it must have evidences to support it then it becomes a what it becomes a theory now before i go there i think this one is a little bit clear the six mark questions or seven mark questions they are going to come from here number one theories of evolution of evolution okay. number two that is lamarckism or darwinism number two speciation speciation number three present day evolution present day evolution now this difference between lamarck and darwin yes but present day evolution you can't go to the paper without because these are six six marks six marks each yeah i told you you go back you you you, you come back and then you tell me what you found there ne? yeah all right let's continue uh -huh. theories of evolution lamaka theory down is theory lamak what you need to know is how to apply it but i'm just going to talk about it ne? I'm not going to take too much time on it i will spend the last few minutes on uh, evolution uh, human evolution but i'm going to explain everything so that you don't lose anything lamaka theory state two laws of lamaka theory is law of use and disuse that's number 1 number 2 is law of inheritance of acquired characteristics so it means that Lamarck has two laws. Number one, law of use and disuse of a structure. Number two, law of inheritance of acquired characteristic. Why is Lamarck's theory not accepted scientifically or by scientists in the in the world? Number one, there is not enough evidence to support his theory. Number two, organisms don't change because they want to change. Organisms change, not because they want to change. You understand? Yes. It's for him, he says that if you want to be tall, you just become tall. You want to be short, you just become short. No, organisms don't change because they want to change. Number three. What is the difference? You have to know how to use how it is. Uh, it is. Uh, it is. It. How Lamaka theory is applied. For example, how did the big elephants, elephants with the big trunks came up with the big trunks using Lamaka theory. So meaning that the more you use the structure, the more... At the beginning, all elephants had short trunks. Then you tell us that these elephants, they use their trunks frequently, maybe to defend themselves or to reach the trees, and then their trunks became bigger and longer. They pass their genes. Uh -uh. Yes. They produced babies with big, long trunks. But if you are using, you are using natural selection. I mean, let me just use this as for natural selection. You have to start with, there is variation among the elephants. Those with long trunks and those with short trunks. Those with long trunks they could survive yes why because they they, they 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 are able to defend themselves they could reach the tall tree plants while those with short trunks they could not survive they died in large numbers you understand this is called natural selection 
This is called natural selection. I think. Now, those with big trunks, they pass their genes to the next generation. After many generations, all elephants had big trunks. Let me show you. Let me see if uh, we can get any question here. But you can't go to the exam without knowing, knowing that. Using sex, show gender in a human how it is. I, I see, I explained this. Eh? I explained this. You see, six marks. Six marks. Okay, when I find it, I'll try to show you that example. Speciation. Now, students confuse speciation with natural selection. What is speciation? Speciation is the formation of new species. Please don't confuse those two. Look, speciation is the formation of new species. What's a species? It's a group of organisms that can interbreed, uh, meaning that they have similar characteristics. Group of organisms with same characteristics that can interbreed to produce a fertile offspring. What is the population? Is the population is the group of organisms of the same species that can interbreed to produce a fertile offspring. That's it. Now, speciation is the formation of new species. When they talk about speciation, they will bring about, uh, for example, one area, and then this area is divided into two. You understand? And then after that, uh, if you try to mix them, they will form different organisms. They will form different organisms. They will form different organisms. So now, let me explain to you. You have a population of A. So you have to tell us that there was one population. Where is this mark? There was one population. Yes? Now the population is divided into two by... A geographical barrier you have to tell us the geographical barrier let me show you because i saw a question here yep so what is the geographical barrier here the geographical barrier describes speciation of poto and lemmas how did they become different species there was one population of these organisms there was one population of these animals did they talk about the, the ancestor if they talked about the ancestor, then you have to speak about it. Scientists believe that Poro and Lema share a common ancestor. They didn't mention the ancestor. So you have to tell us that. Don't say that there was one population of Poto and Lemas. They have not yet become Poto and Lemas. No. So they have not yet become those new species. You have to start with what they started with. There was one population of this com uh, of uh, these animals which shared a common ancestor. Yes? And then what happened? The population was divided into two by two subpopulation by, 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 by a geographical barrier. What is the geographical barrier here? Ocean. So don't, you don't need to tell us by geographical barrier. Tell us by the ocean. If it is a river, tell us by the river. Unless the question is just open. And then now, you formed two subpopulations. That is eastern, east coast of Africa and Madagascar. And then what happens? There is no gene flow. There is no. They, this one can't come this side. Gene flow means that there is no sex between them. There is no gene flow between these population. Whereby these two, they experience different environmental conditions. Are we together? So natural, because they experience different environmental conditions, natural selection occurred differently. Oh, someone is asking me about punctuated equilibrium. I will come there. They formed, I'm going to explain it. Different environmental conditions, therefore natural selection occurred differently. Whereby they became genotypically and phenotypically different. And if you remove the river, uh -uh, if you remove the ocean, they cannot mix to interbreed. Therefore, they formed two new species of Poto and Lemas. They formed two new species of Poto and Lemas. You can only talk about these two new species. Don't talk about two species before you talk about genetypically and phenotypically different. If you talk about it, you're going to lose marks. 
you're gonna lose marks. Even if someone is marking, it will pain, but nothing we can do, you will lose the marks. So what do you do is you only talk about different species after talking about genotypically and phenotypically different. If you don't do that and you talk about you form two different species that the, the, the population was divided into two different species by, and, uh, by the, the ocean, you are gone. You have lost the marks. The paper has killed you. You didn't kill it. I think you understand what I'm saying. Yes. So, now, I repeat. Let me repeat it for you. There was one population of a common ancestor. One population of common ancestor. The population was divided into two subpopulations of Eastern Coast Africa and Madagascar by, by what? By the ocean. There is no gene flow between the two subpopulations. You see, there are still populations, not yet new species. Remember, a population is a group of organisms of the same species. And then now, they experience different environmental conditions. Natural selection occurred independently or differently. And then now, uh, they became genotypically and phenotypically different. If you remove the ocean and you let them mix, they cannot interbreed to produce a fertile offspring. There are four, two new species of Porto and Lemma have formed. They can bring when they are more than two or oh, more than three so in this case you tell us three new species have formed so don't stack on two new species don't stack on one new species so two new species so i'm coming for for punctuated equilibrium charlotte yes you are saying hi i'm 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 i'm, I'm. you are, are you still here all right now let's go to punctuated the equilibrium before i go to present day evolution oh let me just finish the present day evolution and then i'll talk about the punctuated the equilibrium if i forget you remind me present day evolution it deals with the bacteria bacteria virus um uh, black pepper moth we are talking about present day evolution. Evolution which is taking place, which we see. You understand? DDT on mosquitoes. Yes. So, you know, if they are bacteria, it means that you're going to use antibiotics. Use the same principle of natural selection. Please don't confuse natural selection with the speciation. So, in this case, you will say that there was one population of bacteria. These bacteria are separated by. These bacteria are separated by the variation which is there so now when you're explaining uh which you, when you're explaining you say that there was one population sorry 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 you, you you say that there was variation among these bacteria those which are resistant to antibiotics and those which are not resistant to antibiotics then he now tell us that the bacteria which are resistant to antibiotics they survive on the application of the antibiotics while those which are not resistant to antibiotics they die those which are this is called the natural selection those which are resistant they pass their genes to the next generation so the next generation will have more bacteria which are resistant and after many generations the antibiotics will become ineffective to bacteria let me repeat there was one uh, um, there was <clears throat> sorry there is variation among the bacteria those is, you can use for mosquitoes about ddt you can use for virus about the antiviral or arvs there was one uh, the, 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 there is the, there is variation among the bacteria those which are resistant you have to tell us the variation if you don't tell us the variation you lose the mark there was variation among the bacteria those which are resistant and those which are not resistant those which are resistant and those which are not resistant to antibiotics those which are resistant to antibiotics they survive on the application of the antibiotics while those which are not resistant, they die in large number on application of anti.
biotechs. Those which are resistant, they pass their genes to the next generation. After many generations, the bacteria are going to become ineffective to antibiotics. Simple. There is no way how you're going to skip or you know, they're going to bring a lot of things which you don't know here. Never. What is the difference between artificial selection and natural selection? And what is the difference between Darwinism, Darwinism and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the Lamarckism? Difference between artificial selection and natural selection? You know that artificial selection, what is basically on artificial selection is... The, 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 what is a selective force? First ask yourself what is a selective force? Selective force in artificial selection is human. While in natural selection, the selective force is the nature. Is the selective force you understand yes and then uh lamarckism and darwinism the the major difference is uh, lamarckism organisms don't lamarckism organisms change because they want to change but in darwinism organism change due to the environment yes the number two uh, in lamarckism individual in the population change like if me i want to be big i become big if i want to be small i become small not the whole population but in darwinism only the whole population change remember when corona came if you want or not they say that you have to put on a mask natural selection you don't put on a mask you die whether you want or not you have to do so you understand therefore that is natural selection is it clear? So, in Lamarckism, a population, sorry, individual in a population change. While the, uh, uh, Darwinism, only the, the whole population will change. So you can also talk about other differences between the two. Let me talk about uh, la, um, punctuated equilibrium. And then after that, I go to human evolution. Someone is asking me, how do I draw a pie chart? How do I draw a pie, pie chart? Uh, I'll go to the last question. Uh, that is the last question. Question three. The pie chart, how do you draw, draw, draw this uh, at the end of uh, human evolution? So that just I show you how do I do identify independent variable, dependent variable. How do I get it from the question? How do I know the control variable? How do I know the 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 the, 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 the conditions which are supposed to be put in place before you start? All right, punctuated equilibrium. It is very simple. Gradualism versus punctuated equilibrium is. Um, gradualism versus punctuated equilibrium is saying like this you have two scenario punctuate gradual gradual when you say gra gradual it means that it's slow the change is slow while punctuated equilibrium the change is fast you have periods of no change and periods of change the change is rapid periods of no change periods of change periods of no change periods of change this is punctuated punctuated what is it gradualism here you take here you require a lot of time a lot of time here it occurs in short short periods so punctuated equilibrium you have periods of no change periods of change period of change period of change and in most cases the punctuated equilibrium is caused as a result of mutation mutation where well, this one is changed is is caused as a result of natural sorry selection yes natural selection here yes well here mutation why because you just wake up in the morning and then you have something something different which you didn't have before mutation may be occurred so that is punctuated equilibrium or the other side is it gradual gradualism this marks the beginning of the end of evolution by natural selection let's kill the human evolution now human human evolution human evolution guys is the 
the most important part where students sometimes uh, lose marks is uh, a phylogenetic tree. I don't know why, but we will talk about it. Uh, someone is asking, do you do calculation for pie chart? Yes, you do the calculation for pie chart before anything else because you can't do a uh, percentage in a pie chart because the circle is not uh, three is not in percentage. All right. Let me just see if I can find here a question. The first question in genetic in, in, in human evolution can be what is to which family do humans belong? To which family do humans belong? They belong to to family homini die. Homini die. Homini die. Differences between oh, let me tell you what are the short short questions. Short questions, guys, in human evolution. The short questions which you're gonna find and then you have to give the answers uh six marks number one it is out of africa africa hypothesis that's number one number two is so here you have to take to, 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 to tell us the evidences Ne? evidences of uh, that is fossil fossil you have to tell us the mitochondrion chondrion dna sometimes you call it genetics then you have to tell us uh, cultural cultural evidence and then they can also talk about the differences between differences between differences between humans humans and apes yes and then also they can talk about uh, similarities between apes and humans there is no six question mark they can bring here nothing nothing i repeat nothing unless it's gonna come from heaven okay now let me explain there are some things which we changed a bit and you have to know that's why uh if you check um uh, uh, uh my book of uh, distinction material you'll find out that it's always updated each and every year it's not static it's always a version for that year there will be a version for 2023 all right now let's continue they're saying that now look at this Position of foramen magnum. They're saying which diagram represents the skull? There is a difference between a skull and a cranium. A skull is everything which is encloses encloses the head. That's the skull. But a cranium is only the part or which encloses the brain. Only the part which encloses the brain is what called cranium. But a skull is everything which encloses the what? The brain. I think I'm clear there. Number two. Uh huh. Number two, they are saying that which diagram represents the skull of a bipedal? Now we have three factors which, um, yes, oh, oh sorry, three factors which affect or which uh, uh, do the bipedalism, ne? Of which they can ask you the, the advantages of bipedalism. Uh, you can see far, you can hold the organisms, uh, you can hold the objects uh sexual dimorphism is exposed you, okay you can see the, the the sex organs they can be shown because you are walking yes and then uh the the the, the body is lifted uh is, is is you lift the body out of of the ground yes so it means that less heat is gonna be reflected to your body there is a small surface area for heating of your body from the upper side so that those are some of the advantages of bipedalism but now what are the factors which contribute to bipedalism? There are three. The first one. Why is this thing doesn't want me to write? I will write even if doesn't want me to write. Okay. Uh -huh. Number one is shape. You look at the shape of the spine. Uh -huh. Shape of the spine uh, is is what is shape, and then you look at the 
pelvis pelvis is short and wide and then number 3 these are factors which affect by pedalism short and wide is is wide ne? and short so if you look at it is is wide and short and then uh, uh the, the third one is uh, the, the third one is the uh, position position of foramen magnum it is in forward forward position ne? yes now before i go to explain this what is bipedalism we changed this is is you don't just say that bipedalism is working on two limbs which limbs hind limb or four limbs you have to tell us working on two hind limbs or working on two lower limbs on working on two feet but we prefer working on two hind limbs if you're using limbs it must have the word hind limbs so how is the shape of for uh, shape of the spine able to for uh bipedalism shape here is s shape to allow flexibility that's number one and then um pelvic girdle is short and wider to support the upper weight position of foramen magnum is in a forward position to allow the spine connect vertically to allow the spine connect vertically so basically that's what you are supposed to tell us uh -huh. then they are saying that they are saying that uh the next question is tabula de visible they are saying visible don't bring about anything else visible uh difference between the upper jaw and the lower jaw of a and b check upper jaw lower jaw they're only looking for this you see in most cases now when you bring we bring these you have to know the differences so in in this case you talk about the canines here are well developed they are not well developed the, there is one student who is saying that this one has canines this one has no canines no the canines are there but these are well developed then this one are less developed this one is rectangular shape the jaw is rectangular shape while well, this one the jaw is what is c shape or u shape c shape then if you look at here you have spaces between the teeth uh -huh. there are spaces between the teeth uh large spaces between the teeth here no space between the teeth or small space between the what between the teeth uh-huh now they can ask you now i'm gonna start firing you questions how is the brain size related to intelligence how is the brain size related to intelligence the brain size related to intelligence or how is the skull related to intelligence how is the brain size related to intelligence if the skull is big it is going to accommodate more brain more brain cells the higher the brain cells the higher the intelligence if the brain size is big you have more brain cells and then this is linked to intelligent that's why the previous organisms for example adipithecus they had a small skull therefore they had a small brain capacity therefore the intelligence was also small compared to us and when you are explaining this when you're explaining the uh, 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 the brain there is something which we are looking for if you don't mention it you don't get the mark the brain of human is not bigger than the brain of the elephant it's only bigger than the brain of the elephant if you are comparing it with the body size if we have a big brain compared to the body size compared to the elephant so when you are comparing when you're talking about the brain or the cranium you have to talk about compared to the body size please when you talk about cranium comparing them then you compare it with the body size i think i'm clear there who discovered homo sapiens you have to know who discovered it. i think i should do drop uh we we, we we have a short video which is uh, talking about it who discovered the uh who discovered the um homo sapien team wine oh who discovered okay adipithecus team wine 
Tim White is Australopithecus. Sorry, is Homo sapiens. Now, who discovered humans? Is Tim White. Yet is also Homo sapiens. He discovered himself. No, he discovered the oldest skull of Homo sapiens. Is it clear? Yes. So, you need to know, don't go to the paper without knowing three species discovered in South Africa. South Africa. At least three. Don't go without knowing the three species which belong to Australopithecus Africanus. Please, don't. Which is Mrs. Place. Uh-huh. Taum. Child. And then little foot. These are the three Australopithecus Africanus discovered in Africa. What is the transitional fossil? A transitional fossil is that fossil which has the, the characteristics of the ancestor and the, 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 the next generation or the, 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 the children. It means that it, is, it has not got extinct. It's still transi in, in transition. You understand? Which one of the following is a transitional species? In most cases, we look at Carabo. Australopithecus sediba is the transitional species. Between Australopithecus africanus and Homo habilis. So that is the only transitional species or fossil we talk about. However, even um, uh, uh, Homo naledi is also a transitional what? A transitional fossil or species. Now, question. Give the difference between the skull of humans and the other primates. There is something which I want to talk about, about prognanthus. Because when you are marking that one, humans, prognanthus means protruding jaws. So, the other primates, they are prognanthus. Humans are not prognanthus. Don't say they are less prognanthus. No. If you have it in your book, yes, I know it's there, but we do not give you a tick. Humans are not prognanthus. Protruding, protruding, ne? Yes. While the other ones are prognanthus. Flat face, sloping face. Those ones are fine. For a mag magnum in forward position, we don't want any, anything else. Forward position. Foraman magnum in backward position. Don't tell us that foraman magnum is in the center. Center where? Foraman magnum is in forward position. Foraman magnum is in the backward position. Those are the, thi uh, the, 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 the things which changed. And then you needed to know this before you go for your paper. Because if you make a mistake and you mess them up, you're going to lose a mark. Yet you knew the answer. It's just to rectify those few, few, few small mistakes. <laughs> Lastly, describe, state the out of Africa hypothesis. State the out of Africa hypothesis. We say that modern humans, the word modern must be there. Modern humans originated from Africa. Modern Modern humans originated from Africa and migrated the rest of the world. Originated from Africa and migrated. If you don't write the word modern, it's gone. The mark is gone. Give three evidences to support the out of Africa hypothesis. That is fossil evidence, mitochondrial DNA, and cultural evidence. Now, remember I say that this can come in, 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 in this six mark. Yes? So how do I use cultural evidence? How do I use... How do I use uh, how do I use the mitochondrial DNA? How do I use uh, culture, uh, fossil evidence to do this? Now, fossil evidence you need to talk about few aspects. You have to talk about Adipithecus. You have to talk about uh, you have to talk about um, Australopithecus. You have to talk about Homo habilis. You have to talk about Homo erectus. You have to talk about Homo sapiens. This is what you're supposed to talk about. Tell us that Adipithecus and then uh, 
Australopithecus and Homo habilis only found only found in Africa. I think. Then when you reach here, you say that oldest. Oldest. And also when you reach here, you say oldest. Fossil of Homo erectus and Homo sapiens were found in or discovered in Africa. I repeat. The fossil of Adipithecus, Australopithecus and Homo habilis were only discovered in Africa. Only in Africa. Fossil of Homo erectus and Homo sapiens the oldest fossils were discovered in Africa. That's how you're supposed to write the answer. Now, what about, what about, what about, um, what about mitochondrial DNA? Here in mitochondrial DNA, we use uh, the mutations which occurs in a mitochondria. Why do we use mitochondrial DNA? Because it has a small DNA. So it, it is easy to focus on it, but it's rare to find to find mutations there. So if the mutation occurs, we can use it to trace the lines of what descent. And if we trace them, it brings back to Africa. That's why it's called the mitochondrion Eve. And then cultural evidence. You talk about the oldest uh, tools were discovered in Africa, and those are called the other one tools. Other one. Other one tools. Other one tools. Yes. As I'm winding up with the today's class, so that you go and get your distinction, please, if it requires you to repeat this, to re rewatch this, rewatch it, I'm telling you, I've tried to discuss each and everything which you're going to find in the paper. You understand if i've forgotten something it might be only few but you have 90 percent i'm saying 90 percent meaning that what does it mean it means that over 130 marks you have the max all right uh let me conclude with the pedigree then i'll just talk about few of few of uh few of what few of um the experimental question and then lastly i'll go to the terminologies just only talk about the terminologies and then we conclude for this class i thank everybody who is attending who is in my class and i wish you the best you must get a distinction let's try to finish up now pedigree eh? not pedigree phylogenetic tree uh, before I got phylogenetic tree, how do you write the scientific name? I think phylogenetic tree need I need to use uh, a diagram here. Let me just put out the diagram here, uh, which I can use. Okay, all right. Let me use this. It's fine. Let me check if I have any phylogenetic tree here. Uh, this is the uh, the thing I was trying to explain before. Ah. Describe one other structure difference by pedo and equal pedo. Uh, you can talk about. Oh, okay. I gave the 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 the, the difference, ne? Short and why that the factors which affect that. Okay. Pelvic girdle. Oh, you have this now because I tried to explain it. Okay. Let me use this. I'm gonna tell you all the questions which can come here. How many genera are indicated here? How many genera? Genera comes from the word genus. How many genera? Here is, uh, it's getting to six o'clock. Uh, to six o'clock. I don't know whether the electricity is going this side. Né? Just in case that it has gone, at least you have everything. Né? Yes, when you see me offline without saying bye-bye, it means that it has gone. <laughs> because I didn't check anything. Describe the process of natural selection. Now you see this one. You just explain. You just pop explain. You just explain now. You, 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 I explained it. You, you, you don't use any example. Né? Yes. Okay. Now, name. How many genera are indicated here? Genera is genus. It's one. Genera when there are many. You count the first name, but you don't repeat them. For example, one, Osiropithecus, Homo two. Do I have any other? Nothing. So it means that I have only two genera there. To which family do humans belong? which family 
do or to name the family to which all the present uh, the represented uh, organisms belong to which family do we belong we belong to hominidae yes then they're saying describe the cultural evidence used as a tool you see i explained it yeah all these tools are other ones né? so it means that how does it support the out of uh, Af africa hypothesis it supports hmm? supports the theory of human evolution simple tools were discovered with the simple skulls and then uh, more adv which means more advanced tools with the uh, more or larger skulls which means that they had the ability to modify these tools and were found in the la uh, upper layers how long did uh, okay now let me start how long how how long ago did most of the uh, how long ago did the most recent common ancestor of this and this existed on earth now when they say how long ago ne? for example did the homo egasta existed you come here for example if this is homo egasta i come and draw where it's it, it's it appeared and where it got extinct so it means that I will say two minus one, which means, eh? How long ago? No, 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 no. How long ago? How long ago did they appear? This is how they appeared. It means that it's gonna be two million years. How did they? How long ago did they extinct? It's gonna be here. So it's gonna be one million years. How long did they exist? How long did they exist? That's a question. It means that. I'm gonna say the where they became appeared and where they got extinct, and then I say two minus one, I get one. But here is gonna be million years. It's not going to be million years ago. It's gonna be million years. I think I'm clear there. Here you say million years ago. Here you say million years. Sometimes we always mark this this unit. Then now they are saying, uh, which species first used the tools? When they ask you which species, if it is not indicated here, it is Homo habilis. That's why it's called Handeman. Which species first walked on two limbs? If they ask you species which first walked on two limbs, if it's not indicated here, it's going to be Homo erectus. I repeat, Homo erectus. Then, which species are competed for resources? In this case, you'll find out that if this species... And these species, they exist at the same time. You, if you draw a line like this, you see that this one and this one, they touch each other. It means that they exist at the same time. It means that they competed for resources. So maybe you'll say that Homo egasta and Homo habilis. So it depends on the species which existed at the same time. But it must be having a line where they touch each other. Not exactly, but they must have a line where they touch each other. Mm -hmm. Then now, they are saying... Uh, what are they saying? They are saying, um, explain the possible reason why Homo egasta was placed between Australopithe uh, Australopithecus afrensis and the Homo. It means that this is a transitional fossil. Né? Yeah, it's a transitional. It's a, it's, it's, it's a transitional fossil, meaning that it has the ability, has the characteristics of this uh, organism, and then it has also uh, uh, characteristics for this. All right, explain the possible reason why. Homo egasta. Where is Homo egasta? Homo egasta is here. Ne? And then Australopithecus afarensis is here. And then uh, Neander is here. So it means that this is a transitional fossil. Yeah? It, still, it has this one. Homo egasta has some characteristics of this and also some characteristics of that. Because it didn't get extinct, therefore it's still going. Therefore it is a transitional fossil. How is the brain size compared to 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 to, to, to intelligence? I explained it. I explained it that there's no questions they're gonna bring about this, and then you can't answer. Yes. Lastly, how do I identify independent variable and dependent variable? Those who attended my uh, paper one class, I think you know exactly. Just write ID. I. D. Ne? And then after that, X, Y. I think after that, 
you tell us what is id independent variable not identity card <laughs> independent variable dependent independent variable dependent variable independent variable on x axis so when you are drawing independent is 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 is, is x axis is there so independent variable must be here it must have units please then this one dependent variable is this y axis so dependent variable is here and then now please put the title it must have both the independent and the dependent put units here please don't forget about that and then now because if you forget you lose the marks scale please don't say two four seven eight ten no the range is on the same here is two here is three here you have to use the same scale two four six eight ten you understand if you miss them you lose this and this and then um now the problem now you have got to know that independent is x dependent on y but how do i identify them from the table in most cases the first column the first column however much how many columns you have is i d still the first column in most cases is independent and the second column is dependent please don't miss up yes the second and the third is always dependent so now how do i plot how do i plot and how do i draw a, 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 a pie chart here if you are drawing a pie chart please convert this into degrees for example if i have maybe 10 10 20 20 sorry 20 20 ish no technology 20 30 for example this is africa asia uh maybe uh europe then they say so to put this on a pie chart you have to say 20 10 plus 20 plus 30 so it gives me this is 50 60 60 that's the total so to do this i'll have to say 10 out of 60 times 360 because this is the pie chart pedigree sorry pie chart which is 360 so it give what you get here you do that for 20 you do that for 30 then you plot protractor measure for this then you change the protractor start from here now measure then the remaining one will be for that then you put the title then you shade whatever you shade you put a key here you get the answer get the marks so please don't mess it up and then now that is a pie chart but now there is one for line graph if it is on the same axis and then the bar graph it is um if it is a bar graph yes for example you have 20 30 40 ne? bar graph you plot this and this you get that and that then plot this and this then after that give a space ne? plot this and this maybe 20 and then plot this and this maybe 50 then a space now this bars must be the same if this bar is not the same as this you lose a mark if this bar is not this the, the size must be the same these spaces must be the same ne? if those spaces are not the same you lose a mark that's how kids lose mark with this C graphs then if it is a line graph it is a little bit different because a line graph you have to first plot one by one line graph look line graph this and this but in most cases to get a line graph you have to be with the with the figures maybe 10 30 40 so that this and this you plot you get a tick there this and this you plot you get a tick or a spot there this and this you plot ne? you join then if these two graphs at the same time now this and this now so you first finish one column and another column but independent must be kept now this and this then you plot this and this then you plot this and this then you plot yes now how do i know that my graph is wrong we don't have a graph which runs like that some people have it means that you swapped the axis if you still have time redraw it we don't have a graph which uh, runs like that no this is not met yes so the graph must either be straight going 
if it's going up it must form a wave or it's going down but this so called parabola what what no 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 we don't have them once you see that you just know that you have swapped the axis it means that what was x must be y what was y must be what must be x please take note of uh, that last